And so let's go back to probably in Wills when he was 16, 17 or 18. Okay. Rather long hair, greasy hair, quite spotty, um, quite unsure about himself, what he needed to do, where was his place in earth, in the world. But knowing that he loved fancy role playing games and in order to do this, um, there was two little businesses I had. The first business I had is that I would paint miniature figures for people and people would give me them and then I would charge 50 pence per figure and to paint it for them. And I remember quite vividly um, sat on the dining room table with all my paints out um, my cup of tea, working through it, painting, you know, getting everything done. And my mom being super supportive and saying, do you want something to eat? And seeing it as a business. And that, that was brilliant. I, I loved that. I love doing that. And I don't have the space to do it at the moment. But the other thing I did, and I'm going to show it to you now, is that I wrote a magazine and... I think in those days it was called a fanzine. And you have to remember, we haven't got computers yet. Computers are around, but, you know, it's very, they're very expensive and we don't have printers. Everything's on cassette. And so I actually produced this fanzine on my mom's old typewriter. And this was a fanzine called animated dead okay now unfortunately i can't find um issue one and i know this is issue two because it says at the top ad2 and what i used to do i used to sell these for i think they were 50 pence and what i used to do is that i used to get carbon paper and do a whole load of bits of paper, carbon paper and paper and then bash my mom's typewriter as hard as I possibly could <laughs> to actually make sure it went through all the um, the uh, the um, paper. And I just I've got four four episodes of them and inside there was various things. There was the sages column. Um, in this one, we talked about dispelling um, illusions and the letters page. There was a, um, a segment called class distinction when I talked about a specific class. There was a character spotlight when people in the groups could actually say, oh, this is my favorite character. Magical manufacture. You probably can tell now that I had a real thing for alliteration, which is about new um, magical items. Goblins, ghouls and grillbees. <laughs> which was new monsters. And I don't know if you can see it. The grill bees was actually had, it's just, uh, he actually had a question mark next to it. And then um, this one had um, Call of Cthulhu game in it. And then I actually wrote some fiction called Marvo the Magician. And then there's um, advertisements and competitions. So, oh, actually, the, it, let me just read to you the, the introduction. Dear reader, thank you for reading the first edition of Animate Dead. I hope you enjoyed reading it and I hope that you will, con will enjoy the, this next issue of Animate Dead. Due to production on a large scale, 90 co 10 copies each issue, I am unable to uh, produce the attractive covers that you saw on the first copy. But I hope that this will not discourage you from buying future copies. I have no idea what the first copy looked like. I wish I could find it. It would be brilliant. There has been a great demand for copies of the first issue. And since it was handwritten, there is only one copy available for sale. <laughs> I, I'm a 
assuming it must have been passed round or something like that. Because of this, I've decided to say that it is a collector's item. <laughs> this is why I don't have it anymore. Somebody else must have bought it. And it will be sold to the highest bidder. See, I was an entrepreneur even then. I must stress that this is the only copy of the first issue of, Aid, of Animate Dead and no more will be produced. The money received from this sale, along with the rest of the money that is made from this magazine, is placed in a fund to be used for the upkeep of the D&D club. How nice was I? Nothing came to me. It all went to the group. As editor of this magazine, I was unable to... I will be unable to maintain a full magazine without you sending in articles to be published. These could be of any topic you please. And if your article is published, then you will get five pence off the magazine that it appears in. So get writing. This is out of interesting interest. Writing is spelt with two T's. <laughs> Obviously, there wasn't a lot of proofreading at this point. Because of the increase in size of the magazine, I am able to include a great range of topics within its pages. Therefore, you will see a lot of new sections in this magazine that have not appeared before. The Dungeon Designer is especially written for people who are designing dungeons and are planning to become DMs, uh, Dungeon Masters. Being a DM myself and teaching myself how to DM, I should be able to solve a lot of your problems that new DMs face. Magical manufacturer give a variety of new magical items that have been sent into the magazine and Goblins, Ghouls and Grillbees gives a whole range of new monsters to stock dungeons with. There will also be uh, bi-monthly articles that will centre on Traveller. Yes, see, Mr. Pickles, we were playing Traveller. RuneQuest, which is really interesting because RuneQuest 6 later became Mithras, Call of Cthulhu, which we all love, and Middle Earth. So Middle Earth was a, a, a game that was... It used a, a system called Rollmaster, and there was Rollmaster that I still got. You can just see it uh, here. Um, I still got that system. I still got Middle Earth as well. So they capitalized on that and made Middle Earth. And any 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 other games that people play can be represented in the magazine if submitted to the article. As you can see, there's lots more to read as well as regular items. So I think it's really worth the... And then there's a blank. <laughs> it says really worth the blank P. So obviously I hadn't decided that you have paid. Please, if you find that someone else wants to read your copy, tell them to buy their own. <laughs> Happy adventuring, the editor. And that, that was it. That was the introduction to Animate Dead. So it's interesting. I haven't read that for ages. And it's interesting that the reason that there's I can't find Animate Dead episode one is that it was sold off. It was um, auctioned off. Anyway, there's a lot of um, interesting questions in here. Um, Sage's column, the questions were, do assassins lose, lose their thieves' abilities if they are carrying a shield? If a high-level ranger decides to stop being a ranger, becomes a fighter, does he lose his spells? And what magical items can an illusionist use? Some really good, um, some good um, questions there. Um, in the early 80s, my older brother came home with about 15 copies. Pages for, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, we all need, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. He must have been, uh, have access to a photocopy or something like that. Brilliant. Um, this is the class distinction that I wrote. And it it starts off with a little bit of narrative, which is really interesting because I still like this sort of like approach. If you watch my Mithras rules videos, I often say, do you want to so-and-so-and-so? Or where is this? And like a hook 
And even when I was publishing Animate Dead at this age, 16, 17, and 80, let's poison some dragons, some daggers, and creep up behind him. Oh, hi, Dom. <laughs> Take. <laughs> What's, that? What's that profile name? <laughs> Welcome, Dom. It's lovely to have you. Um, let's poison some daggers and creep up behind him and backstab him, said the thief. Certainly not, you common thief, replied the paladin, and gave a huge cry and ran into the room. Well, we definitely won't get surprised now, said the thief. Who brought that paladin along? <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I wrote, this is all typed out. The spelling is uh, uh, atrocious. Absolutely uh, atrocious. But it's so fun um looking um back on it the i must say i i want to read something else to you in a second just to finish off the stream but it was interesting that um one of the um one of the magazines actually had a segment in that said, wait for it, this is so funny, that actually had in it, I don't know if you can read it there, it says, oh, you won't be able to read it, it says, recent deaths in the D&D campaign. So obviously I was um, talking you know, <laughs> and interesting about characters who had died. Underneath it says, anyone who wants to play Sincere Wish in this part of the magazine is free to do so. <laughs> I have no idea what I, I was talking about. No idea uh, at all. Um, anyway, there, there was something else. There's two more things that I wanted to uh, share with you. So... I really like epic fantasy. I think it's so exciting. And one of the things that I really love is the idea of prophecy and the idea that, you know, there is a prophecy and then eventually somebody will meet that prophecy. And, okay, so this is... Um, this was written by me, 16, 17 or 18 year old, and it's called The Prophecy. Many of you might have heard me talking about a prophecy that my magic user wants to fulfill. So at this time, magic users were my favorite class, like Gandalf, etc. Well, the first time in history is going to be made public by this mag magazine. So when you read it, if you think that any of your characters fill the ones mentioned, then write and let me know. The adventure will be in a form of a wilderness campaign and any level character will be allowed to adventure. The prophecy comes in the form of a variety of passages from some ancient book. So there are large bits of the prophecy missing. This is what it says. And as the great battle of Pesh, obviously I, <laughs> I was still struggling for adventurous vocabulary at this point. And as the great battle of Pesh was fought, the winged dukes of Aqua formed the almighty weapon that would solve the battle where law and chaos contended. As the weapon struck its mighty blow, the battle was resolved and law and chaos were separated by unlimited space. But as this was done, the weapon shattered and the pieces thrown to the wind which scattered them. So great were their powers that no one could destroy them. But fearing that the power that the completed weapon could have, the wind dukes made a prophecy, and this must be fulfilled to gain the almighty rod. These names are, yeah, <laughs> they are, aren't they? And these people must seek the rod, being born of common people, the fighter who fears everything and nothing, for he will gain his freedom. The dwarf that lives forever, 
for he will surely die. The magic user that was touched by the gods, since she will destroy the evil and gain the power. The cleric that bears the number of the beast, for he will have the decision to make that will determine the end. The thief with one hand will save the party and will pay the price of death. And finally, the neutral who believes, for he who disbelieves, for he will cause the party destruction and finally riches. And for these, the seven parts will be given and will conquer the evil that will fight them to the final battle. And so the prophecy will be completed and the rod of seven parts will be scattered once again. Now, I think that is pretty good. I, I really do like that. And I'm quite proud of it. I think, I think in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, there was a magical item called the Rod of Seven Parts. And that's where it was made up. But I mean, right the way back there, I, it's amazing that I'm creating um, these ideas of prophecy. And it reminded me that recently in our Mithras campaign, if you've been listening in, um, we've had a, a new prophecy, haven't we? We've we've had um, a prophecy about the um, how to kill the um, Shahelia. and I, I just thought I'm just going to um, read it uh, just so you can see the improvements. So there's the. Um, the one for Shahelia was before the time start of time existed, she was growing in strength, feeding off the greed of humans. She was massing a following that started to inflict great pain on the world. She was becoming unstoppable. But although she longed to be with the mortals, the elder gods decided that it was not to be her lust for human flesh her desire for servants and followers, her need to inflict pain and suffering made her too vile, too corrupt. I've just had a thought, you know, I don't know why I'm reading it like that because I can actually do this and you can see it, which won't be that exciting, but um, hopefully you, you can um, see it here. I'm just um, zooming in a bit of it. Um, so you can see here the elder gods. If you remember, um, the elders gods banished her. and But the elder gods are failing and new gods come into power. The humans worship these deities. And as a balance of power shifts, so does the walls of her prison. I really liked that sentence. I really like it. The new gods do not remember her deeds from long ago. They are not dedicated to keep her in the prison. As the elder gods strive to maintain their control over humans through their theists and holy places, they are relaxing their grip on the prison. And as, the, her, as their grip relaxed, so did the walls and restrictions. As their focus changed, the prison walls have failed. I, I I always like feel it should be a da 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 at that point. So I I I really like writing um things like uh, this. I I really do, and I don't know if you remember. Oh, I can't show the other thing. Sorry, I can't show you it because it's got a, a part of the adventure on, and there was that also that um that idea. That um, that poem that was saying how to actually um, uh, destroy her, how to actually um, destroy her. So, yeah, very fond memories of me writing as uh, a, a newbie. And I there is just one more thing, if you don't mind. I know you don't mind that I wanted to read um, for you. And this was part of my ongoing story that was called Marvo the Magician. The adventure continues. 
Sister Rebecca had made a fire and was busy preparing dinner while Bod, who was really a Manchester... No, hang on. That's not mine. That's not my uh, writing. That is somebody else's writing that did that episode. This, sorry, this is my writing. Um, sorry about that. Here we go. The adventure continues for our four adventurers, Bob the fighter, Sister Rebecca, a cleric, an elven feet, thief, and our hero, Marvo the magician. The adventure continues. What are we going to do? asked Marvo, trying desperately to remember his spell. We attack soon, snorted Bod. Oh, I was afraid of that, said Marvo. The five orcs had found the party's footprints and were looking about nervously. They slowly drew their weapons. There, I've spelt wrong, just out of interest, and started to search the bushes. Attack! The fighter screamed and launched into combat. Oh dear, it looks like it's going to be... It looks like it's going to be half orc, Marvo heard. Oh, sorry. Oh dear, it looks like it's going to be half orc, Marvo heard Sister Rebecca say as she and the thief jumped out of the shad and bushes on the opposite side of the road. Bod had already killed one of the three orcs that had attacked them and was starting on the other two, demolishing them slowly. Marvo fumbled with his dagger just in case one got past the two orcs. Um, one of the two orcs got past Bod. Hello, Chunky, smiled Sister Rebecca as the orc that she, uh, at the orc that faced her. You're going to be one big hit with me, she said as she smashed the orc over the head with her mace. Go on, she shouted to Mar Marvo. Go smash an orc. The thief was carefully dodging the orc's blow, but he soon got bored with it and slit the orc's throat. There's a little bit more. Bear with, bear with. You're a cut above the rest. I don't know where I got these. You're a cut above the rest, Rebecca shouted to the elf. Meanwhile, Bod was finishing killing his orcs and Marvo decided that it was safe enough for him to come out the bushes. Well, that's that, he said. Shall we go? We go now, Bod said. The party resumed marching order and started down the road again. He's a bit thick, isn't he? asked Rebecca to Marvo. He is a bit, I suppose, replied Marvo. The thief was darting in and out of the bushes. Rebecca watched him for a while, then spoke to Marvo again. I wish he wouldn't dive about like that. He's never still enough to do anything serious with. Like what? asked Marvo, realising his mistake immediately. Rebecca giggled and then looked at Marvo more closely. How old are you? she asked. Twenty-four, he replied. Well, maybe you'll get to know about the birds and the bees someday, she continued to giggle. Marvo went red and looked at the sky. It was getting dark and Marvo knew that they would soon have to find a place to camp. It's getting dark, commented Marvo. Good, perhaps I can teach you about the birds and bees, Rebecca said. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I really do apologise. And then there was this climatic bit at the end that said, Will Marvo get initiated into the entomologist's paradise? <laughs> what? I'm not... <laughs> I'm just surprised at this age that I knew what an entomologist was. Or will Rebecca make it with the elf? Find out in next month's edition of End Animate Dead. Don't miss it. Order your issue now. And that was the that was the fan fiction that I was um, <laughs> writing down there. It always worries me when the chat is suddenly quiet. I suddenly think, oh no, I've pushed it a little bit too fast. <laughs> anyway. You can imagine what the next episode was like. But I have to remember, I have to say, you know, looking back, this book, this book 
has a lot to answer for. Okay, this book has a lot to answer for. It is actually um, responsible for making new friends. It's responsible for being mocked. It's been responsible for being labeled a devil worshipper. Yeah, really, a devil worshipper. It has filled a multitude of hours for me um, creating new things, writing, sharing, being a dungeon master and DMing and creating new adventure. It certainly has been um, the start of a very long journey. And looking back, even on the difficult times, I think it's been a time that I really have enjoyed. And it's got a lot to answer for this book, but the majority of it, if not all, is all very positive and has allowed me to actually interact and talk to people and absolutely fantastic. Now, just to let you know, just before I go, because I try to hit the hour, um, if you are interested in... Um, what my storytelling is like now, and um, then you can go over to my Kofi um, RPG sh shop um, over there. That I it's something that I'm branching out on, and there's some of my um, fiction in here. Um, for example, these are free. Um, you can pay something if you wish from the depths of undisturbed sleep and security drone and replenishing memories. They're all available. Let me just go over, make me small, and then you can see it. So this is the, the site. Um, these are encounter sheets um that you can download um this is the free one so just you can see what you actually get um you get um a, a sort of like a one-sided um um information about an encounter i'm just going to um come back to this i'll go back to it uh, in a moment uh i i do apologize and you might be thinking but why is he charging for this? This is not fair. It's not worth it. I, I figure out that each one takes me about an hour to do. So I'm charging £1.99 for an hour's work. And just so you know what you get, so you um, can see in the encounter, you always get, it's only on one sheet of A4 paper, you get a preamble giving you some ideas about how to um, implement the encounter. You get a short narrative that you can use to introduce the encounter or um, bring, put it into your game and things like that. You get a series of events that can happen and what, what you actually can do with them. And then finally, at the bottom, you get a bit of an outro, okay? And um, you always get that with um, every single one of them. And as you can see, I'm adding to them um, all the time. So this is one about escorting merchants around town. This is an obnoxious cartographer. This is an encounter about a broken wagon, attack of the swarm, so forth and so on. So, yeah, if you're interested in any of those, then please do have a look. Um, it is supporting uh, me and my work and trying to, you know, bring what I love doing, what I love doing with the role playing and the live streaming, etc. You know, trying to make some income from that so I can keep justifying, um, you know, this way of existence.
Okay, and don't forget you can support the channel by liking, commenting, or subscribing. Part of this video will be available after the live stream, but some of it I never, I actually delete. So anything that I was talking about at the beginning, right at the beginning, that just goes. I think it's a bargain as well, Duff. I really do. Um, it, it's they're slowly going down in price uh, because every time uh, nobody buys one, I sort of like think, are they overpriced? What should I do? So anyway, we, we'll see. Um, yeah, so don't forget liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing what I do here would be brilliant. Don't forget that all the ways to support me are down in the comments. And if you're a Mithras fan, don't forget to join the Discord and to have a listen to the podcast Mithras Matters. And, and that is available on all well-known um, podcasting platforms. OK, thank you so much for coming along and spending the, the evening, the hour with me. I hope it's made you feel all warm and fuzzy listening to fond memories. And thank you for sharing your memories as well. And please continue to do so in the comments later on or on the Tapper Talk forums, etc. It's been lovely spending the hour with you. Normally, this will be in future on a Monday night. Um, we normally do our role playing session on a Saturday night that you can see live on Twitch, 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock BST time. Um, that's us at twitch.tv forward slash inwills. Come along and see us there. And don't forget the channel has a variety of actual plays and gibbering GM series and also Mithras rules. So indulge yourself. Go, go, uh, just go and watch one after another. You won't be disappointed. OK, no worries, Carl. Thank you very much for coming along. Until next time, look after yourself. Stay safe, stay healthy, but most importantly, you stay positive. And I'll see you next time on the whatever I'm going to call these streams. See you later. Thanks for coming out, people. Bye. Bye-bye.